This is Mike Lanier from the Let's Roll podcast with my co-host Jeff Thisted. And we were just talking, it's almost been a year since we did the the last podcast, but we're getting back into it again. Uh, We got our guest, John Gardner from uh, Tech Garage. I was going to say Garage TV. I don't know why. Uh, (laughs) But he is on Motor Trend every Saturday. And uh, tell us how you started getting on TV. I know you do other things right now. Right, yeah, yeah, stroke of luck. (laughs) No, bottom line is, hey, thank you, Jeff and Mike. I appreciate you guys having us. But uh, no, we just, I'm actually an automotive instructor at an HF certified college. And um, years and years and years ago, we started doing training for different corporations, um, big name corporations. And you know, who better to do the training than someone at a technical school that has all the facilities and everything else. And just kind of natural at it. I was, I was training on stuff and, uh, um, you know, we got to YouTube and doing some stuff and they saw it and they said, Hey, we're going to come down here. How about we shoot a pilot on a, on a how to show. And I'm like, well, there's the most boring show on television. I mean, you know, <laughs> really, I'm going to sit up here and teach and, Eight years later, I mean, we made it to Saturday morning, getting ginormous numbers. It's amazing how many people are starving for information. But uh, they come down, they shot that pilot in 2015. And like I said, I thought it was the most boring show in the world. I'm just doing what I do is teach. We just kind of teach on the systems and, you know, we're not, we're not throwing wrenches and sparks flying. And, you know, it's, it's the old, it's the old how to show, man, the Sam and Dave, I mean, back with the two guys garage and the shade tree mechanic. I mean, basically that same format. And, uh, we started back in 2015 and we're, we're still rolling today. Matter of fact, we're, we're shooting tomorrow. The whole crew's coming down tonight and we're shooting this whole weekend. So season eight wow. and half of it's in the can. We'll have the rest of it probably this weekend, a little bit in November. And that'll air in uh, 2022, starting on Saturday mornings on Motor Trend. So super excited for that. Listen to you in the can. You've already got the Hollywood lingo down. Ain't that something? I mean, yeah, yeah, nothing like you. I I see your work, but hey, no, it's no. It's but I think that's one of the re. That's one of the reasons I think the show resonates with people, and it's been on because it's real. Like you said, there's no uh, people aren't throwing wrenches. There's not manufactured drama, and and that kind of stuff. And I'm not a fan of the manufactured drama, but like you said, people are starving for the the car genre. That's why Discovery Motor Trend have got all these. They're just throwing. They're throwing it out. They're trying to get any stupid car show they can. And at least yours has been on for a while. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, no, that's 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 it. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you, you had here and Jared. I mean, they did a phenomenal phenomenal job on Car Fix. But I mean, they're just there's a lot of limited shows. The Two Guys Garage are phenomenal. I work with them at Brent, and I work with all these guys. And it's just really neat, you know, that that Saturday morning used to sit there, like you said, you know, and 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 you know, really, our our, our general audience is probably forty to seventy years old. It's crazy. I mean, there might not be a lot of kids watching, but we garner a pretty big audience on Saturday morning, and 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 it's like I said, it's thirty minutes, and we're fixing cars, but we take it basically to the next level, which is really cool. We can we can get into some pretty in depth diagnostics and, and do some stuff here because we got a you know multi million dollar facility, a partnership with Chipola College, and it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. They're they're real comfortable with us doing it here. It brings in a lot of manufacturers, a lot of sponsors, a lot of demos, and they let us do it on nights and weekends. So you know it's been going that way for eight years. So I'm real real psyched about it. Where is here? Where you guys shoot at? Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, North Florida. We call it L.A. Uh, Lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> North. Well, yeah. it's, so it's uh, it's sunny in purpose. It's that's even nicer than uh, Southern California because you've got just a little bit of humidity to keep it warm, right? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful now. Now it's still Florida in the summer. I mean, it's it's hot. It's like walking out in a rainstorm. I mean, every day. But right now, yeah, the humidity's down, sixty-five degrees. It's beautiful. Um, that's what I was, I was born and raised in South Florida and we moved up here. My wife took a job at a federal prison and we, we just, we ended up falling in love with it. Yeah. She's a, <laughs> she's an actual PA, a physician assistant at a federal prison, believe it or not. One of the stipulations to actually, uh, she had to spend two years here to pay off that student loan for the, to be a doctor there. Then it was at a prison and this was the only one left in Florida. So I stayed home. She came up here and 20 years later, we're still here. I followed her. <laughs> What I, 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 the only thing I know about that is watching it on TV. And it's right. like I, I know some friends who are police officers. And in my opinion, some of them have lost faith in humanity because they have to deal with not every, but not necessarily the scum of the earth, but in a prison, it's what does that, has that ruined her faith in humanity or did, uh, that? Oh my God, I can't imagine working there. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, I cut my hand on a car and I come home and it's like, just shut up. No light of cane. Here's the stitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, maybe I'm not a prisoner. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up and take the stitches like a man. I come oh. home, my 18 year old kid's laying on the sofa back and she's stitching his eyebrow. I'm just like, wow. I'm like, light of cane. She's like, no, it takes more time and effort. Just shut up. <laughs> yeah, wow, she's worked there too long. Yeah, it's rough. We get some really cool stories, but I mean, you know, it, it's funny. I mean, even in an automotive training facility like I am here, we're training kids and I mean, these kids, they call them, you know, down the hill. It's, it's those kids that, you know, they need that hug. They need that pat on the shoulder. They didn't have that father figure. And it's almost the same difference. I mean, we, we deal with stuff all day here with just life changing incidents that happen that, hey, we can better these kids life. And it's not so much about teaching about cars, it's teach them how to be a man. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's changed. It's changed a lot. It's teaching how to be, man, how to be a good person. It's like I've got right. a yeah. neat, nieces and a nephew and they may be Beautiful. mean to each other and and horrible to to one another but when we go out in public they are, i'm so proud of them and my uh, brother and sister-in-law i think that they've raised or they're raising good little human beings uh they yeah. care about each other they care about other people too um so i think yeah good for you for for uh, trying to ra or, or uh, helping out raising good human beings because there's yeah, not enough and human of them. beings. And I shouldn't have said guy. I just we call them. No, guys I know what you mean. Screen. I know what you no, mean. No, we got a we got a whole class. We got three, four girls. So I mean, doing the automotive thing, doing great things. I mean, crazy high wage, high demand. Man, I got 14 jobs on my desk. I can't fill. I mean, not to get off the show topic, but it's absolutely nuts out there. I mean, you're out there every day. You guys are seeing it. You're on the front lines. I mean, our advisory members come in here, and it's like. You know, can I have them? I'm like, man, at least give me a year. It's a two-year program. At least give me a year and, you know, quit taking all my students. It's crazy what's going on out there. There's a ginormous what, shortage. What kind of jobs are you looking for? What kind of jobs do you have openings for? Oh, everything. You name it. Line tech, soil changes. We got Mercedes, BMW, every dealer, every aftermarket in town. And like I said, I'm up in uh, uh, northern, northern Florida, an hour west of Tallahassee, small town called Mariana. So Dothan, Panama City. 60, 80 mile radius. They're just all just chomping at the bit for, for anybody. They're just, they're, their criteria right now is, can you fog a mirror? I mean, are they breathing? And can, can you give them the ethics to get out here and, uh, you know, give them the ethics to show up? We'll train them. So we're pumping them out of here like crazy and, and they're hugely successful, but there's a ginormous shortage in this industry and, and it's scary. It's scary to see what's going to happen. And you and said it's a, uh, it's a two year pro. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, we, we've had uh, Joe Zof, Zoper on, you know, and that's one of the things he's been talking about is shortage of mechanics. And uh, yeah. in 10 years, what that what is that going to look like, you know, in 10 years? Yep. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and he is big. A lot of these guys are like Lou Santiago also. He's a teacher. So uh, getting these guys interested Ooh. in uh, Yeah. Getting these guys interested in the business is uh, – one thing unfortunately around here my high school dropped out a program you know that i went to and i ran in my teacher and he he was so upset about it that they just get rid of the program and you know that's just more jobs that people could do and make good money at it you know well, why yeah. did they get rid of the program they just phased it out it's it's happening all around the twin cities here in minnesota um there's people losing shop classes everywhere and i think it's probably not just here it's, yeah, it's happening it everywhere, man. I mean, it's happening everywhere. I mean, they just, they have no idea the big push with Mike Rowe and all the cool stuff going on for the, you know, the regular blue collar workers. We're going out there working and stuff. And, you know, the, even up the hill, we're at a college. So it's a college technical center, but they finally, it took, I've been here 20 years teaching and doing all kinds of other stuff and well, but it took them at least the last two years now to flip flop and say, hey, that, that they call it down the hill, you know, the welding, the cosmetology, the automotive, Man, those guys are paying the bills now. Those classes are packed. I'm like, you know, it, you know, the four year degree, these dudes are making 50 grand, 70, 80 grand after three or four years out there and they're coming back going, what, what's going on here? What the heck's going on? How come our, our graduates up the hill are going get a degree of four years ain't even making near that much money. So it's, they're starting to see the difference and, and the high school counselors, that, that paradigm shift of, you know, we're standing around with rags in our pockets with no teeth working on cars. I mean, that's that's not the case. I mean, these guys are brilliant. These students are brilliant. It's amazing what they can fix and what they can do today. So there's a there's there's a it's shifting, but the, the perception has to shift. I think with especially start at the high school or middle school level. I agree. I, yeah. Watching one of those silly shows, it was a, a, one of those street outlaw shows, and it has uh, the three of the guys go to Las Vegas. 
And, well, we're here, and, and they go to rent these exotic cars to, to race them. And, well, we're with this guy, and he's our boss. He's, we're, you know, we're plumbers. And the, the guy renting the cars, oh, well, plumbers don't make any money. Like, are you out of your yeah, right. mind? Where, where, the, where the hell have you been? Like, what rock have you been living under? Plumbers make a good living. And it's like, so can mechanics. It, in your, uh, at your school, are you teaching both, uh, like, old school mechanics how to use a screwdriver, or is it just plug and play? Because all of the new cars, or that's why you can't get a new car, because of the stupid chip shortage. Uh, but it's like on, on old hot rods. You need a screwdriver and, and a wrench, and, and there's no computer. So is it, are Great. you teaching both or, or, uh, or exclusively one or the other or? Some, some do. I'm, I'm 50. I still will, we'll put tools out there. I'm probably the one of few that still pull apart starters, pull up all alternators. And why I do that, not so much because they're doing it in the field or not doing it in the field, excuse me. I do it because like you said, I'm putting the tool in their hand. I'm putting that digital voltmeter in their hand. I'm, I'm getting that hands-on ability, you know I mean? The theory, that's great, but like you said, I still believe, you know, I'll, 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 I won't rebuild a carburetor, but I'll start with carburation because this fuel injection theory is identical. It's still doing the same thing. I mean, look at ignition, right? We had contact points for years. Now we got a transistor opening and closing a coil on plug. So if they understand how it worked back then, it's sure enough easier to diagnose it now. It really is. So we, we do it all. We, we start with carburation and get to fuel injection, start with points and get to coil on plug. Mm. Yeah, well, say as much as I love my Holly uh, fuel multi-port fuel injection, it's a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong, but I my carburetor it. got me to the top of Pikes Peak, to the bottom of Badwater. I mean, it's I, I've had no problems, and I, I uh, drove from Colorado out uh, out to the Woodward Dream Cruise uh, Hot Rod Power Tour, and my fuel injection it was resisting the whole time. Car was sputtering, and we figured out what the problems were. But it's like carburetors. Even if, if when the zombie apocalypse comes and we've got no more, carburetors will work. <laughs> carburetors will work. They'll always work. work. <laughs> they will. They've been around for a hundred years. The, they will always work. Yeah. I'm on the other side of the fence, man. I, I grew up with fuel injection. I uh, went to ASEP, an automotive service excellence program, which is a General Motors program. So I was kind of a dealership baby all the way through. And then I worked at some aftermarket shops and I just like... And I see some of these guys like you want to switch back to carburetion. I'm like, oh, please, no. I'm good with the fuel injection, but uh, yeah, to each his I, own. I mean, I it's. Too, it's... But I'm, I love the fuel injection, but as long as it works. It got so bad that my, I've got a, 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 a MacBook, a, little, a MacBook computer, but the Holly has to use a, uh, what do you call it, a PC. And the one time I need my computer, the stupid program parallels won't work. So I went to right. Best Buy, I got to get a PC, and now I can plug my PC into the ECU and LOL, all these, anyways. Um, but yeah, it's a, <laughs> fuel inject, it's an amazing thing because you can tune it on the fly. Do I want power right now to pass this BMW or do I want fuel economy? And you can just type away. It's an amazing thing. Well, yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, yeah, we, we convert them over like you all the time. And, and you're right. I mean, there's no doubt about it unless you're a, a programmer or you got someone that's at least going to tune it right. You, and that's that's... You know, you can't find one. Forget it. I mean, there's two or three guys that can do that and map that, like you said, and just so you just go with it, self-learning. Yeah, whatever. And and it is what it is. Self-learning. Yeah, kind self of are. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very frustrating for those. Yeah. How did you? Absolutely. How did you get into cars? Man, I just just necessity. I mean, I I was actually believe it or not, I was a professional highlight player nobody even know what highlight was but was back the, in the, the 80s things, miami vice yeah man yeah yeah i was a professional <laughs> highlight player in in miami yeah, seriously? And Palm Beach. Yeah, seriously at 16 years old i was playing with a bunch of bass players and uh we played that was great man i was making a fortune i had no parental guidance life was grand it was totally nuts and then uh Sure enough, that stuff just went away, man. It went to a strike, and we just kind of gave it up, and, you know, and it went downhill. The paramutuals went downhill, and I've always worked on cars, always loved cars. So I'm like, man, now what am I going to do? I mean, I'm 20 years old, and I got nothing. I mean, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I just played Your around. parents weren't into cars? Not really, not too much. No, okay. I was just... I mean, to the point where they they would a little bit, but not not crazy. I would just I would I would mess up their yeah, car and no. then they would send it to the yeah. shop. That's a no, yeah. And uh, and then we would just I just like tinkering with them. Didn't know what I was doing, so and then I went to that like I said that ASEP program. So I'm not a car guy at heart. People go crazy. We go to SEMA and they're like, oh man, this is this and this 454 thick up. And I'm like. I didn't even know what it was. That's that's cool, man. I'm like, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is, you know, but I can fix it for you. 
I'll fix it for you. Yeah, I'll hook it up and fix it for you. I'm going to need a schematic. I'm going to need this. I can't, I don't know how they work, but I'll figure it out. That's for sure. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, they say that they say, you know, they ask me all the time, well, you drive something cool. And yeah, I've had cool cars. I have CTS Cadillac. And right now I'm, I'm toying with a Mercury Marauder. I, I had a project M&M, a Mercury Marquee, and I'm driving it. And my, my daughter's 16. Now she's 18. She won't even ride in the car with me. She's like, you're not riding around in a marquee. I'm like, man, this thing will go 300,000 miles like a taxi cab. Rides nice. And I love it. So I upgraded to a Marauder, but she still won't ride with me. <laughs> it's not cool. <laughs> That's funny. I just saw one of those shows. They were driving around, uh, I think, a 70s Lincoln Continental with the, the trunk it. or the, the tire inside the trunk and that the hoop around the trunk. Not the Continental <laughs> kit, but it's inside. It's like, that thing is so hideous that it's kind of cool now. It's That's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. I mean, but that's what – we was at a Toyota training class one time, and they built that box, that, uh, that Toyota box. I can't even think of the name now, the Scion or whatever it Scion. is. Scion, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they said the trainer says, you know what the pros and the cons are, and we're like, oh, no. And he says, well, the pros are that it's a box, and the cons are it's a box. Everybody hates it. <laughs> they buy it because they hate it, and they buy it because they love it. It's a win. I'm like, geez, I never thought of it that way. But yeah, they're they're pretty hideous. Yeah. So what are you driving now? I'm driving that Mercury Murata, that 2003. Oh, no, We're actually, yeah, yeah, 2003, the Murata with the Cobra motor. There was a, just a dude in town. We went through that Hurricane Michael, and it smashed the sunroof. So we put a little roof panel on it, and uh, it still rides good. It's, uh, we're going to put it on the show. We're going to do episodes 12 and 13. A couple years ago, we did what's called Project M&M, which was the Mercury Marquee. And it's kind of Rock Auto's deal. It was Tom Taylor from Rock Auto. He wanted to get find a car that you know, an older person let sit for a year or two and then wanted to bring it back into service. So we did 13 little episodes of a project, a little segment on the show, which was cool. It was called Project M&M. So I just happened to stumble across this. So we're doing Project M&M too, but this time we're beefing it up a little bit from the marquee to the marauder. <laughs> so it'll be a little cooler. It's black, it looks cool, but we're just gonna go through it. Just, we're not gonna do a whole lot to it. You know, we're not, not gonna supercharge it or anything. We've done that on the show. We put the Elbrock supercharger on some pickup trucks and done that, but we're, we're down now just, gosh, I mean, you know, after eight seasons, you know this, you guys, I mean, you just 26 shows, you're, what do you do? I mean, you just kind of recycle what you do and hopefully the audience don't catch it. I mean, we got so many trainers, we got so many cars, we got so many tools. I mean, we just, we just do it in a different light. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough to come up with some new content, especially when you're just diagnosing. If you're rebuilding a whole car all season, it's a little bit easier because you've got a million cars to choose from. Yeah. All so right. are you going to keep the, uh, the Ford or the Mercury engine? Or are you going to LS it? I mean, Mike is the one who told me to L LS everything. That's why I got rid of my small block. He made me. LS exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we built an LS last season. We did LS rebuild on an engine show, and uh, no, I'll just keep it. I just I don't even like you said. If I'm spare time, I'm I'm at the condo with the wife. or off doing it. We do I do uh gosh I do Motorhead Garage too sometimes with that crew up in Tennessee. And then right now we're filming for so many different manufacturers, and just it really kind of snowballed. They they see what we're doing on the show and going wow, could you just talk about that? I'm like yeah, we've done it for 20 years. I mean none of this is scripted. I mean I, I'll tell you everything you want about a brake pad. You know, in a class, we have three hours to talk about a brake pad. So I can, you know, I can take a brake pad and talk about it for three hours. What do you guys want to talk about? So these manufacturers are chomping on the bit now. And I'm just like, I don't know. I got four years to retire from the college and a Florida retirement. So I got a great job. So I'm just like, where do I, where do I divide up my time? And, and what do I really want to do? I mean, I'm, nothing, you know, probably, you know, I've had guys call me, some of the manufacturers call me and, and their, their marketing guy wants me, but then the marketing company says, well, you're not popular. I said, well, I don't, I'm not trying to be popular. I can fix a car, but I don't have 8,000, 8 million viewers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You're, so, you're not popular. Thanks so no. much. I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted someone to teach about your air conditioning machine. Exactly. I didn't know you were somebody popular. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You know, you've been on a show for, you know, eight, nine years. So you must be yeah. popular enough, right? I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's, you know, you go to SEMA and you, you walk around, I'm sure you get attention, but it was the janitor at the Little Caesars there that says, hey, aren't you on a television show? We just walked around with 800,000 <laughs> automotive people and nobody said anything. That's, that's how yeah. car guys are, you know? It's like, okay, like, yeah, crazy. Speaking of SEMA, are you going? I, I, I thought Jeff said he wasn't, now he might be. I don't even know. I was, and then uh, my gig got canceled, or they're they're not using uh, hosts.
So it got canceled, and then I just got the call from a Hot Rod uh, Motor Trend. So oh, I'll be nice. there on yeah Thursday and Friday. I'm thrilled. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, and, I gotta meet up with you. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'll get in. I hope on Wednesday. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'll be there Thursday and Friday, and then at the uh, with Hondo from uh, Laid Back at the uh, Vegas. I think it's the Vegas Motor Speedway for the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. So I'll be out there oh, on okay. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And then uh, from there, I got to figure out where, uh, which way I'm going to go up to Pleasanton for the good guys, and then from Pleasanton all the way down PCH, and then uh, to LA, and then to Scottsdale for the last good guys of the season. Yeah, I'm flying out that Saturday. Uh, I've been to the Optima Challenge before, but uh, I got free tickets from Ken Lingenfelter. But uh, nice. Are you going to be going, John? Are you skipping? I know a lot of people. You no, know, yeah, I'm just like I a hate to say this. A lot of people are skipping. Yeah. Publicly, oh, wow. yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. It's that. Yeah, last year was, you know, it's like, damn, this isn't so bad. I'm sorry, this is horrible. But yeah. we got, I got four or five invitations like you, and then two of them bailed out. And then I was just like, man, they were on the last week. We're filming this weekend, so the producer, they, we do stuff with Motorhead Garage. He's like, you know, we might be able to get away without you. I'm like, if you can, please do. I'm all right without it this year, I think, just with the mask and everything going on. And I don't know, yeah. a couple, like you said, Jeff, a couple of them were bailed. They just didn't think there was going to be a big enough audience. I don't know what it was. But so, so no, I don't think I'm going to go this year. I mean, yeah. we shoot we shoot on Motorhead Garage. We shoot um, usually two shows there. We'll just do the product stuff and go around to the booths and shoot two shows there. So we always do it for Motorhead Garage. Nothing to do with Tech Garage, but uh, – Speaking yeah. of that, I, I work with uh, Brian Lowens. You probably know Brian Lowens. You, uh, yeah, for the NHRA, he, genius man. I got to work with him he, two or three, two or three years genius. on Motorhead. Yeah, no, the stories and the knowledge are almost endless, and his as silly as it is. Um, I the last I saw him at SEMA a couple of years ago and had to stop. It's like his posts on Instagram are fascinating. <laughs> the history he has on these machines. It's I I, I, I dig it. Dude, dude, we would shoot Motorhead Garage, and, you know, I'm pretty good. I could give the stuff and just go ad lib, and I can go at it, you know, from teaching for so long. And the camera don't bother me a bit, you know. So most people come in and, like, oh, man, we got to do it three or four times. And and I did my thing, man. Lowen's come in the first time, and, you know, and, man, I just, just slumped in my seat. I was like, oh, my God, dude, I'm like – amazing amazing i never seen anybody in my life could talk five minutes about an oil drain plug and just i wanted to buy one when i was done with the superlatives and the the the, the language he uses and the upbeat and the guy is just amazing to watch the nhra is amazing to watch the stuff he talks about those things going down the track love that guy to death man but just in a league all by himself totally amazing he's yeah. to me he's the is it the steve magnete Mag, uh, the steve of a uh, of NHRA, because that's what he is. The, with the Steve's the same way. It, exactly, you know everything. All these little intricacies that I, yeah, I dig that. Crazy, yeah, crazy. But yeah, that was an awesome four years. I learned so much. That's how I learned most about the cars and the hot rod scene on the cars. I mean, I'd even do NHRA too much. I mean, I know all about it, but not to the point. I mean, it was phenomenal when people would come to the set if it was hot rod or old car or something related man, he, okay, that's yours. If it was technical related, that's yours. And the producer was like, this is great. You guys, we're not fighting about any TV time. Just, just, I don't even want to touch it, man. You could do that thing like oh, incredible. So that, that's how that works. So it was pretty neat. Very yeah. cool. Yep. Good yeah. time. But uh, here comes well, Josh Ellis. Come time. on over here, Josh Ellis. This is, <laughs> come on, grab a seat, buddy. Hey, Josh Ellis was... is the other co-host and the oh. technical director on the show. He just come back from lunch. Oh, so cool. Is. Hey, yep. go? Yeah, hey, done. Man, Josh, yeah. very cool. So he actually works here with us. And then Dave Dobson is the third guy. He's on his way down here right now. He's coming down today, and the whole crew will be here tonight. And we're actually filming for three three long days. Like, you guys never done that. So, yeah, it'll be three long days. And uh, we got it all staged and set up and pretty cool. It's pretty neat. It's a pretty efficient production when they come. They, they got a pretty big production. So they're coming from Johnson City, Tennessee, I think, the Masters Entertainment. So, and uh, – they just we we knock them out. We'll film them, and uh, he he's so is the that usually director. is that usually how long it takes? Is it's a three day shoot for one show? No, we'll do one show. We'll usually about four hours per show, maybe more than that. We we break it up. We shot in October. It's a neat part about the show is segment three and segment four. The two commercial breaks on the end are totally standalone segments. So it's garage ed, and then it's the tech tip. So we fix the car on segment one and two. So we shoot all those and, and Rock Auto comes down and they do their portion of the little one minute Rock Auto storeroom and stuff. 
we'll shoot all those. We shot those way back in October, October, and then we'll just do segments one and two where we actually can fix the cars August. now and the opening and the closing teases. So we'll get well, all you in mean October last year. No, August. October, August. Oh, I'm sorry. August. October now, August, August, my bad. <laughs> August, on, August okay. 1st. Yeah, I, this whole COVID, I'm totally, I forgot what year we're in. <laughs> But yeah, August, August, I'm sorry. Now they'll come do the okay. meat of the show. We'll, we'll get about, we'll get half of them done, segments one and two, and then they'll come back in November and then December if need be, just depends on how quick the shoot goes. And are those uh, 13 uh, episode seasons? That'll be 13 nice. episodes, yeah. And they'll all be done before they air, we hope, usually. We try to get them all done and then we start, I do Motorhead in the Garage can. In, in the meantime. In the can, yeah. And that yeah. was, that was that's funny you said that because our first producer, Tom Gee, he come in here and, it took me two years just to stop moving my hands and, and stop moving stuff. And, and I wanted to direct because I'm a teacher. So I'll tell you exactly what, how we're going to do it, where we're going to put it, the whole nine yards. And two years, I finally learned to shut up and listen, shut up and listen. He wants it here. He wants it here. Don't turn it this way. He wants it here. I didn't know camera four is panning in this one, that one. I mean, Jeff, you've been there, done that, I'm sure. And it's like, it's, that's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Stop moving everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he calls it jazz hands or Italian hands. Yeah. He's like, you're all over the place. Stop. I'm just like, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Leave me alone. <laughs> but and that that's one of that's the reason they hire you. You know your stuff. You're you're organic. I hate that organic word. You know what word I hate even more? Way off the subject. Influencer. It drives yeah. me insane now. The yeah. influencers, anyways. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. What are we influencing? <laughs> so is your is your uh, is your daughter excited to be getting this uh, the Mercury Marquee? Yeah, she loves it. She loves the mark. She loves the Marat even worse than the Marquee. Now she won't ride in it. She ended up uh, uh, it was a BMW X1. So her and her mama got some nice cars, and I drive the junk. So it's all good. It's <laughs> she's a doctor. I can't complain. She's paying the bills too. So it's all yeah, fine. Right. Not only is she a doctor, but a doctor. What a good person. Yeah, like working at a, that's uh, yeah. I can't imagine working at a prison. Give her a big yeah. hug. If that, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, get, yeah. I don't yeah, want to say giving back day. to society, but that's well, wow. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. It's neat. So, it's really neat. So, what do you think, John's the future of automotive? You know, we're getting into, you know, we're gonna get into electric. Obviously, they're pushing that more and more. Uh, yeah. What's gonna happen for like the automotive shops? What do you think they're gonna be a big change somewhere along the line? I know they're gonna have to still teach like regular gas powered engine stuff, but you know, things are gonna change, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I think they're a far way away. He's teaching me, he's pretty he, he's pretty on top of this stuff here, but I'm still coming in here just trying to do my thing and learning real quick how quick we have to change. But uh, we're doing electric, we're doing, we got a couple of Leafs donated from Nissan and a couple of full electric cars. And we did a couple on the show, which is cool. And um. I think it's going to be a while. I do, but I, I yeah. believe the technicians are going to have to evolve. I mean, they're they're getting pretty good with this stuff now. The high amps and separating it, where the guys are not at least going to get electrocuted and get killed out there. But uh, it's just, it, yeah, yeah. It's you know this whole RPM act and everything for this. The shops, the mom and pop shops, the manufacturers are yeah. just still just pushing and pushing and pushing. Even when we buy a scan tool, man, it's so hard to get some information on these newer cars. I mean, they just keep hiding it and locking it. And I really feel for the aftermarket shops and what's going on. And I know it's going to get twice as hard now with the electric cars. I mean, even Mercedes the other day, we just changed the battery and had to tow it to Mercedes. It was VIN coded to the car. You had to program the, the model. Battery the battery was VIN coded. Dude, the battery. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Brand new it's one. Like all the all the hot rodders out there who are poo-pooing the electric cars and oh we don't like them at if they've probably never seen them run and it's like i kind of poo-pooed them too those yep. teslas at the autocross come out on a sunday the all-american sunday and those things off the line they're silent death <laughs> they just leave in a, in a yeah and the no sound it's amazing it is infinite torque i mean it's people infinite. don't realize it i mean yeah these little leafs we have will probably smoke the Camaro yeah. from here to, <laughs> here to the curb. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's just infinite torque. Yeah, it's amazing. And and I think they got them turned down. I mean, you know, a year ago or two years ago at SEMA, you saw that Copo Camaro electric and, and absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, with the stack of the motors, they had three or four of them on there. I mean, one could have done the job for a street car. Absolutely nuts. But yeah, I think, I think you're going to see that. I think you'll probably see a lot more of these hybrids. People are starting to embrace that now, I think, to the point where at least 
gaining some horsepower with the hybrid motor, not so much just a hybrid as far as we're, we're getting better gas mileage. We're sandwiching them now in some of these hypercars just with the electric motor giving us 20 or 40 more horsepower on the tail end of the car. So, I mean, if you're going to do that, why not go electric? I mean, I agree with you, Jeff. I mean, they're just, they're poo-pooing it, but the supercars have the hybrid motor in between the, the transmission and the differential back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you had just mentioned that co the electric Copo Camaro a few years ago. Yeah. And it's in, that was a few years ago. And then just yesterday, I mean, GM's been talking about going all electric and whatnot, but yesterday they dropped the bomb with a 632 cubic inch big block pushing 1,004 horsepower, their new crate engine. Yeah. That's so it, it's good. I mean, it's good that they're at least giving us hot rod or something too, because I've seen it reposted, I think, a thousand times. Who, who, right. What car are you going to put this in? It's like the 55. I mean, Yep. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's a big block, not an LS, but I'm uh, I'm not certain. I haven't seen the specs on it yet. But they were they were up mean? against that. What was it? The Helifin or whatever that is. That exactly. Yeah. 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 They were up against but that. The Helifin is supercharged, right? Yeah. This is it. Yeah. This one's natural. Uh. -uh. Oh, yeah, I haven't natural, seen right? it. It's Holy based on the 572, and it's got a big uh, single plane intake manifold, uh, multi port fuel injection, and a, I think a big old Wilson throttle body up top. Yeah, Dude, well, when's like it gonna a, end? They do, <laughs> right? but yeah. they do say for drag race use only. So I wonder. Well, they how, do. You know, I wonder how hard it's gonna be to get, you know, in a regular, regular car. I don't know. Is it? Is oh, someone will have it in there next week. Someone will have it in there next week. They'll have it in there next week, well, dude. Somebody. It, it, in a, in a, it, makes, it makes me sad that that uh, the LT5 is no longer one year and done. Uh, the most it was the most powerful and supercharged and uh, 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 Jason he's got that have you seen the Texaco Camaro? I have not. A uh, friend of mine Mike DeSold DeSold Engineering out of Texas built this '69 Camaro. It's got the old school. It looks kind of it's very patinaed looking with Texaco livery. It's got the it's a full 10 tenths race car and it's got the LT5 wow. in it. And okay. It's, that's the only car that I've seen in person with it. It's amazing. But Chevy's nice. one and done. And then to outdo themselves they've got that 632. Unreal. So right. It's a good time to be alive. Yep, that's for sure. Yeah, they're putting them in everything, like you said. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'll keep mine the same for a while. <laughs> I'm working on cars all week long, man. I'm like, uh, uh. On the weekend, I don't want to touch them. <laughs> really? Yeah. So is I the don't. Mercury, the Mercury is your daily. Do you have a hot rod that uh, that you're working on? I did. I had a CTS Cadillac. I had. I loved the 14. I had that for a while. I would toy with that and tune that a little bit here and there and played with that. Now just CTS, not the CTSV. I'm sorry, CTSV. My bad. CTSV. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the 14 the with the V. Yep, with the 6.2. Nice. Yeah, it was. It was. It was awesome. I love it. One of my favorite cars I've ever owned. But it was the 14, so it was a little one, and it was just totally out of control. <laughs> Totally out so of control, my, that frame. My my car, I was having problems with it at the the Woodward Dream Cruise. So uh, Joe Parks from Pilot Transport, we put it on the trailer. I was the first casualty of the Hot Rod Power Tour before we even started. And as oh, my, I'm videoing, uh, I'm, I'm videoing my car going on the trailer. And as I turn, Brian Thompson has got a 2014 CTSV station wagon, six speed manual, one of 32 made. And like, I'm going from one wagon to the other. And he says on camera, hey, Jeff, you know, this is your ride. You want to drive it? Well, blah, blah, blah. seriously, like any ticket you get is on you. But but uh, I enjoy being chauffeured around. His wife was in the back. He's riding shotgun from Detroit down to Norwalk, Ohio. Oh, one of the, it, yeah, the CTSV wagons or the CTSVs. They are a thing yeah. of beauty. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. a lot of fun. It was awesome. Yeah, we used it on the show, too, a couple of seasons. And I drove it as a nice. daily driver. Loved it, loved it. But just, I don't know, just... Kids are in college now. I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy driving the marquee. I don't have any ego, so I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no ego. And, good. and you don't have any worry about it getting stolen. It's a, it's a marquee. No, 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 no. no. It's good. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Paint's flying off. It's beautiful. It's a good plan. Good plan. Right? Exactly. Well, exactly. I think, uh, I guess we could, unless we got anything else you want to talk about. Um, anything, Jeff? Any other questions? <laughs> uh, I know what else got... you got in the works? You got, you got yeah. some secret projects in the works for the show? Um, Besides the marquee? <laughs> Besides M&M no. Square? No, we just, uh, we, we this season we're doing just, just a lot of basic stuff, a lot of real, we tried to go this season with kind of strategy-based diagnosing. And, and I like to use an analogy as, you know, you take the lug nuts off your car and everybody doesn't chuck them across the shop and then go find them later. So we're really implementing a lot of this. And we got electric steering column, which is cool, all electric steering. Um, we're doing the leaf. We're doing a little bit more hybrids. Wait, steering on the steering column. The steering column is electric. 
the column is electric on the HHR, a column assist electric, yeah, and then we're doing the actual electric rack and pinion down below too. So we're doing them both, but a lot of people don't realize, and that's what we found the HHR just for that. The column has the electric motor built on it. And she yep. had no idea. You ever yeah, watch that show, how, Fast, Faster with Finnegan? And that's how we're doing. We're actually opening the hood. It's funny you should say that. We're opening the hood. We just kind of bulletproof. I, I bullet script it. I don't script it, but, you know, open the hood and it's hard to turn. And we're trying to figure out, hey, it's got a manual rack and pinion and there's no power steering pump the whole nine yards. How the hell is this thing turning so easy? And then we go to the onboard two connector and we find the, we find the electric motor on the rack. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, on the a, column. On the column, yeah. I had no idea. My friend of mine, Mike Cotton, his daily driver is an HHR. And yep. anytime I try to make fun of him, it's like 32 miles per gallon. It's like, I just shut up. I mean, 32 <laughs> yeah. miles so per you gallon, go. you got me. Yep, no power steering pump, <laughs> electric column on the, on, on the column. <laughs> yeah, sure, exactly. I had no idea. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot, just a lot of diagnostics. I think people were starving. Our social media blew up every time we did some some diagnostics, just some real checks, some electrical checks, putting that DVOM back in your hand. The basic stuff that your do-it-yourself guy can get out in the driveway, but yet probably still reach a lot of the technicians out there. So that's about our following. I mean, we're just, we're, we, we, can, we can go into some deep stuff too. We try to keep it light. The neat part about it is I can take some of that deep stuff and teach it pretty lightly. I'm, I'm, that's basically my forte is breaking that stuff down and making it simple. So we tried to beef it up this time, this go around. We got a guy working with us, that Dave Dobson. Um, Dave Dobson is the executive producer. He's also a co-host on the show. And he's really gave us carte blanche on just doing a lot of cool stuff that we can do, which before we just kind of were limited to some of the stuff due to time, but time's not really so much a constraint anymore. So we're going to, it'll be a good season. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Now your Very sponsor cool. is Rock Auto, you know, they have all the parts you ever need, but. Um, yep, yep, definitely. <laughs> the, the and question just, is, uh, are you running yep. into parts shortages? I mean, a lot of people. You know, that's crazy. Say. Tom Taylor was down here from Rock Auto, and, and um, I get a ginormous shopping basket together for a quarter of the season, make four of them throughout the year, and I send it to Justa there, and, and I expected that, and, and no. I mean, very, yeah, very wow. small and very limited. And I asked him, I asked him that. I asked Tom Taylor that same question. I said, what's going on? And he says, man, we just... We probably got so many manufacturers that Rock Auto is, is is crazy. If you go to their website, I mean, it's just so many different choices that there's always at least one of the parts available. And I don't specify which one, you know, I don't really care. As long as the parts come, we're happy. And, you know, he's got so many vendors. And that's the beautiful thing about that, too, is they got so many vendors that, you know, I still work with Federated and AVI. I work with Advanced. It, you know, they're all, they're all, it's okay. They're comfortable with Rock Auto because they use all their vendors. So everybody, it's a win-win for everybody, but I haven't had that problem. We've had it locally. We've yeah. had some engine rebuild yeah. problems and trying to find parts. And, you know, I think it's probably going to get worse. I'm assuming I talked to Phil Moore with Federated and he's their parts guy. He used to go to uh, China over there and that's where the plant was exactly where it was, where their brake plant was. And he was here not too long ago. And he said, man, he's having a hard time getting the containers, getting the ships. You're going to start seeing brake pads disappearing. And I, yeah, I mean, I've heard it from some of the car guys, you know, some of the classic cars, they're starting to run into problems getting stuff, even like a torque converter, stuff like that. Um, I believe it. Yeah, so that's, I was just wondering. Cool, cool. Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, I've got a question. Would you mind if I, when I'm at SEMA, the next time somebody asks me, is like sometimes I go with my pop and, hey, this is my son, Jeff. Oh, well, what do you do? I am uh, Jeff Thissett of a professional highlight player. There you go. I, <laughs> I love it. I've never heard of, yeah, there, you're the yeah. first professional highlight player I've ever met. So can I use that line? Absolutely, man. And have them, <laughs> you, 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 got, you got open call, man. You can always call me. No problem. Yeah, we, uh, we you, played sir. with the Bass. It was a Spanish game. We were the first couple Americans to get into it down in South Florida. It was a big news thing back in the day. So it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I just, just you know, went down to a little amateur place, started playing, picked it up, loved it. And, they wanted to get Americans in, so it was just a fortunate situation to where uh, Miguel Aprecio, I'll never forget his name, was a bass guy, he took us under his wing. He said, hey, I'll train you guys, you make you pro when you're 16. I'm like, good luck, and he did, he did. It was, it was, it was rough. We, cool. we were Americans, so we had that killer attitude. We got out on the court. We, we, we really dominated in a couple, two or three years over the bass because it was kind of a gentleman's game. They would just play, and we're like, no, we're going to kill this point and win. <laughs> That's what Americans do. <laughs> So you just have you just got into the sport you were just into it, and then kept on going and going and then this guy saw you and we need some American pros and th that's amazing. 
it's a crazy story. Yeah, so I'll send you a clip. Send me a link. I'll send you some of the email clips of the newscasts when they went. We were two of the first Americans to GoPro in the Florida area. It was in. Really? Then we went to New. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back when, nuts, absolutely nuts. Yeah, you see it on the beginning of Miami highlight, or excuse me, uh, Miami Vice. Miami Vice. <laughs> Miami Vice. Yeah, yeah. And we watched them shoot that there and everything. So yeah, yeah. They had a whole show, a highlight cool. on Miami Vice. Yeah, we were yeah. all part of that. Yep, that was neat. No way, you were part yep. of that. Yeah, we were part of that. Wow. I didn't know anything about television, but we were all part of it. Yeah, pretty cool. Dude, it you, was were neat. On my, you were on Miami Vice. That's one of my favorite shows. Like, <laughs> you know, Mike, he's like Cord Newman. Cord, yeah, yeah. Cord we was just sitting around under the tree, and now he's a movie star stuntman, and you're a professional yeah. highlight. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a car show on. nationals. Car show nationals first. There's an exclusive. Yeah, I don't think exclusive. anybody knows that. Nobody knows that. Nobody in the world knows that except the guys that come here. We got some Cestas and Pelotas and a couple of news articles in the little dress room back there just to remind me, hey, you're not that anymore, man. <laughs> Come down to earth. What's a Cesta and Pelota? What's yeah, Pelota? Cesta is the basket, Spanish for basket, oh. and the Pelota is the okay. ball. It's the ball, yeah. So it's rock hard. The are walls you, are, are you writing grand. all this down, Mike? You get the Cesta and Pelota? <laughs> I'm going to have to research this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why the only two people know what we're talking about is me and Jeff. <laughs> that's so cool, man. Well, well thanks cool. for coming on the show with us. Take a yeah, time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Awesome. No problem. Thank you guys for having us. And yeah, just check out Tech Garage and uh, appreciate it. You guys keep doing the great work y'all are doing. It's a Tech Garage. It's on uh, yeah. Saturday mornings on uh, Saturday Motor mornings Train on Motor Train. Yeah. Are, are you on Facebook, on Instagram? Where can we where can we find you? Yeah. Yeah. John Gardner TV. John Gardner TV dot com. John Gardner TV, Facebook, Instagram. Everything's just John Gardner TV. So that's my own stuff. And then there's a Tech Garage one, too. But we just feed stuff over to that when it's airing. So John Gardner TV. Okay. Check them out, John well, Gardner TV. Yep. Hopefully this whole thing recorded. We'll find out because I had uh, I tried to diff do a different background and it says it wasn't recording, but it says it was recording. So we'll see what happened. Hey, I got the hopefully we'll get it. Flashing. Yep. Yeah. Just holler at me anytime. I'd love to speak with you guys. It's been great. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Take All care. Right. Take care. Bye bye.